There is something massive in France. I don't know if you see it here, but 80% uh, or 90% of the kids in schools don't believe in what they read in traditional media, in magazines or newspapers. Mostly they reject what they read in the traditional press just because they believe that they have some interest, some capitalistic interest. You know, there's Le Monde is a newspaper in France. It's a, it's a very important newspaper, but if you go and meet some uh, 16 years old kids and you talk about Le Monde, they, they will reject it and they will prefer to inform themselves on internet, on Facebook, on Twitter or whatever. So it's a, it's a weird period for us because everyone is kind of changing the source of information they are looking for. So they are getting so many different sources and most of the time the young people don't understand that it's important to know, for example, who took the picture. Most uh, of the time we see a lot of different pictures going on the internet and there is no signature, there is no caption. It's like, take this picture, invent your story, you can decide whatever. So, this is something scary and we want to be in school to be able to, to explain uh, kids why uh, a photojournalist is working uh, regarding certain rules, why he's uh, doing a, a caption all the time with the five of you, why it's important to, to take a picture as a document and, and not uh, just a, a, a funny picture that you share on Facebook. There are two kinds of different pictures. We believe that the, the picture some photojournalists do become documents for history. They, they can be also documents to, to, to prove something. They can be proof from war zone or conflict zone. It happened that the work of photojournalists are used in trial uh, 10 years or 15 years later. So, for example, with the, with the uh, crash in Ukraine, when they destroyed the plane, a uh, few photojournalists were on the scene right after and they were able to document what happened, they were able to make some document for his story because a lot of investigation will be done starting from those pictures. So this is a message we want to convey in school to make them realize that it's kind of difficult to inform themselves on the internet if you don't respect certain rules regarding the credit, regarding the source, regarding where the news is coming from, can I double check information, etc. So this is basically uh, a short presentation of this stuff. I'm trying to to remind me maybe something I forgot. No, uh, maybe, yes, I forgot uh, one thing, uh, two things. The, the first thing is uh, DISTURB is not publishing national news. We will paste some international news in Georgia, but we will not paste what's happening in Georgia. We will paste what's happening in Georgia, for example, in France or in New York, but we never, we choose not to publish national news, not to paste national news, just in order to stay uh, tolerated by politics or by the authorities. We don't want to confront anyone, any politician, or any society with uh, what's happening in their country. We are just here to educate, to promote our work, so we want to talk about what's happening outside your country and it's the first step we believe to, to raise awareness and then if you are as a Georgian citizen so much interested in what's happening in Armenia, in Afghanistan or in France, I'm sure you would look for what's happening in your country. So this is basically the event we do. And what else uh, for the, the future of this year, we hope that you will stay uh, non-profit organization and to promote our work. We hope to be able to develop it in a lot of different countries. So how we develop it is very simple. We only trust photojournalists for that work because it's non-profit and because you have to believe in your job and you have to be able, when you paste the picture, to be able to talk to the people that stop by, that pass by, to be able to explain it. The, the work you do to the people directly. So we are going to meet a lot of photojournalists in a lot of different regions. We are making the travel ones with Pierre or Capucci or whatever. We explain the rules, we explain how we do it, and then when we go back in Paris, we hope that the team of local photojournalists will keep going, will keep pasting, and we keep developing collaboration inside the country. So I'm here, I have to say, 1,000 thanks 
to the BBC Photo Festival, to the Frontline Club, to Tanta, Nestan, everyone that today uh, made this trip possible and made this presentation possible. Uh, they all get involved in the project and I want, I wish one day the project in Georgia, this project in Georgia will be theirs and they will deal with that, they will select a picture, they will organize some basic, they will respond to festival, they will collaborate with schools. So this is how we, we aim to develop it. I will stop uh, my brief and if you have any questions, please feel free to <coughs> raise your hand. I'll give you a mic, respect everyone who can you. That's right. I've got a question actually regarding your discussions with uh, people in the street and I'm very curious to find out if you've ever had a big controversy for instance wherever you go regarding one of your pictures. Big troubles? Yeah, big trouble. No, because once again, uh, uh, when we paste we decided to do it on... It's a day? When we based it, when we thought about the operation, we decided to do it on sheet paper and using water-based glue, it's for this particular reason. For example, when police come to stop us when we paste at night, we always ask the dessert bill seeker, the baster for us, not to run. We are not uh, bad boys trying to avoid the cops. If the cops come, we talk to the cops, we show them what we did, we show them what's on the picture, we explain them who took the picture, maybe the photographer who will be here will be with us, so we will talk for the police. We present a press card and then the discussion and always uh, on a good note because uh, once the picture is faced, I can take it up very easily in two minutes. So if you are police and you ask me to remove the picture because he got a call or a complaint, it's no problem. I take up the picture in front of him, he sees right here that there is no damage on the wall and then he asks us to, to go to bed. That's it. But maybe besides police uh, trouble, um, discussions in the public, in the media, about something that's particularly topical in a country, have you got any memories of something that you thought, wow, well, here we've really distorted? So the, 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 the funny thing is that we always have a lot of good uh, reaction uh, coming from everywhere. At the beginning, this heard the, the media in France were so excited to talk about us. So I know from being from the media, I know that media guys love to talk about the other media guys. So it's a little bit the cat that uh, it is uh, a So the thing is, uh, it's mainly 98% of the time positive reaction. People in the, some cities are asking us when they see us when we will come back in their neighborhood. So they are really eager to discover more pictures and to receive every month or every six months, I don't know, it depends, uh, uh, new pictures. And uh, we receive the invitation on TV, on radio, on newspapers, so everything is very encouraging. Then we also had some return from photographers that explained us that they received a message from someone that see uh, that saw the picture in the street. So it's also something that we are very pleased about because we are working on the access of the information. We want to, to make it easier to access this kind of picture. So when someone passes by a picture, remember the name of the photographer, go on his website with the internet at home and then contact the photographer to say thanks, to say, well, it was powerful, or to say, can I have a print? This is for me and this is exactly what we want to do. Someone has an observation. Uh, was completely clear, everything is. Yes. Um, as I know, you have already pasted some pictures in the Jordan Street, to the streets. Yes. Have you already pasted? Yes. So, how did you choose the topics of the pictures? Why, and why do you decide that the things are good, you only to paste in the Okay, so uh, the, the way we edit this term, basically it's a... Uh, we are following the news worldwide, like a magazine would do, and we are selecting subject that we believe must be discussed. Uh, for example, the refugee situation in Europe, that's something that we talk about a lot, because it makes a lot of consequences in Southern Europe or everywhere in Europe. We 
we are seeing a massive uh, exodus. So we want to talk about this, we want to talk about war, we want to talk about conflict of laws, uh, we want to talk about environmental issues, about social issues, it can be everything, unless we have to find a um, strong image. We are very, very much looking for a strong image with an emotion. If there is an emotion, we realize that the passerby will stop and that we try to seek more information. And plus we are trying to select for photojournalists the, the most recent picture they did. Because we also realize that in the street, if you pass by a picture that was done two days ago, it will be more powerful. And you will realize that, okay, this happened like two days ago. I was having dinner with my friend, I remember it. So it's more powerful to connect your lives to the other lives. And then we are trying at every operation, when we go to New York, when we go to Georgia, it's of course a different editing. And this is why we want to, to develop it in a lot of different countries with the local photographers. For example, here, when I decided to come with Nestan, who is organizing the, the festival, she, I explained her what I needed. I explained her that I needed, of course, at least five photojournalists from the city that knew the city, that knew every street, that knew every corner, that could tell me in this street there is this kind of information moving. This is a young neighborhood, this is an old neighborhood. And all those information, all this work, in weeks before we based it, was done by some local uh, people from here. So Nesta and Tanta helped a lot. And then we decided uh, the, which subject I would bring, and mainly we are talking about big issues. Uh, I, I know you are not concerned about the refugees and they are not arriving in Georgia, so it might not be the first concern here, but there are some subjects that is the ones to get away, so we believe the refugee one is uh, one of them. And we also want to talk about the neighboring country, so we talk about Armenia, so we talked about the other side, the completely eastern country in Papua New Guinea, about uh, violence against women. So it can be a lot of different things. And in the next step, of course, for the next uh, pacing in Georgia, I wish I would receive some subjects, some themes uh, coming from here, saying, coming from photojournalism, saying, okay, we want you to help us to pace this kind of subject. We want to receive a picture from this kind of subject. Some schools, we are collaborating with schools in different parts of the world. And in Australia, for example, they receive every month a picture. But they do ask us for the picture. We do not send a picture just like this. They do what they want to do with their kids. And sometimes the school teacher come and say, OK, we've discussed this subject with my kids. I want a picture on this subject. Can you find me some? And of course, we are here to, to, to help you to find the right picture. We're sending the picture even if we don't paste it in the street after that. But we, we just love to be able to think this up as a tool for every photojournalist, for every society. It has to be a tool. The, 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 the project behind this term is in Europe, it's, it's uh, obvious. There are advertising everywhere in the street. It's crazy. Uh, you cannot walk five minutes without seeing a lot of advertising. We believe that uh, in Paris, for example, every day one person sees 3,000 different visuals for advertising. Can you imagine that? Without, without my consent, I'm not willing to see as much advertising, but I see 3,000 between 3,000 and 4,000. So the question this I'm asking is all those spaces in the city that are made or given to advertising company. I would like to ask with this term, Pierre, uh, I would like to ask as a photojournalist, would it be not a bad idea just to take 2%, 3% of all those spaces and to do something for everyone, to do something for free, not to, to sell you sunscreen. I don't want to sell you flight tickets to Dubai or whatever. I don't care. I see so many advertising like this. I just want to ask the CEO whether they would be ready to paste some international news just like this, just saying you are citizen of the world, it's the world we live in, we are all connected, so I believe as a mayor, I believe that you my citizen should be informed and receive a uh, good quality of information. And as I told you, we are not seeking authorization, we did it in 
berries at night, we eat it in Burkina at night, we eat it in Melbourne at night. And finally, a few weeks after, a few months after, the authorities always call, call us back. And they call us back not for the fine, they call us back just to understand how we can collaborate again and how we can set up an organization that will help them to face everyone. So we are starting to do this with a few cities in France. And basically, they will look for their association, for their network, their local network, to paste and to find a, a neighborhood or place in the city where they will say it would be international news. Every month, it will be new international pictures. Well, it's, it's, uh, if you remember, 70 years ago, I wasn't there, but you, you could have the news in the street. People would yell the news, they would scream the news, people would give you the news for free. It's more or less the same philosophy. We want to, to give a, a free access to international news. I was just um, curious about the, the idea that you were saying that you were trying to educate people. Um, but what kind of education is it basically? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like one of those people who is against the news. Because when it comes to news, like we see it on television, you know, like we see statements coming up. They're mostly like exactly the same thing, like one, one sentence, two captions about an incident. Yeah. And after that, something else. It could be good, it could be bad. And, you know, it comes just, again, you know, it kind of uh, it makes people kind of, uh, on, on, a, on a long term, makes them kind of apathetic. You know, I, I feel like they could see it. I mean, it's just like the same thing as you say, like advertising. And we see it on the, you know, it's basically, I call it a visual pollution. It's everywhere, but we don't see it anymore. We don't I mean, see it. yeah, we, we, we see it. We don't. We, we, we've seen it so much that we don't see it anymore, yeah. you know? Um, such projects is actually really great. It pr probably makes people pause and think, but it's always one way. It's never like, it doesn't create a debate. Like, I feel like, okay, now what should I do about it? There's, you know, six workers in, I don't know, in East Europe, whatever, I'm seeing it in the, in, on, 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 on public. I see it and I feel pity. It creates a sensation in me, but I, I feel like, like how can I, how, what can I do, what action can I make? So it's sort of like, I, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I think you, you understand my question. Yes, there is, for, for me, I understand yeah. there is two questions. Yeah. There is the first question is uh, what I mean by uh, I want to educate kids in the school, bringing this stuff in the school. I will answer that. And the other question is basically, is Okay, you show the psychology us. behind that. Yeah, it's, it's a more verbal question that you ask, and I'm glad you, you said it because I had this conversation with a few friends months ago, and I'm still thinking about it. It's the question is as a photojournalist, as a journalist, you are telling me what are the issues, but that's it. Do you think it's enough? Yeah. Can't you do something else? Yeah. Just tell me what's going wrong, just tell me what are the solutions. Should it be my work as a photojournalist or as a journalist to bring you a solution? I don't know. That's a philosophical uh, uh, way of thinking, but I also have a point of view on this, and I will finish by this. Uh, the, the educational part uh, that we want to, to, to set in schools, it's very basic, actually. I mean, very basic. It's starting to explain kids that always deal with picture, that a picture was taken by someone first, always. So you must mention the name of the photographer. It must be a stupid idea for so many person, but it makes sense when the picture comes from the conflict zone or when the picture is trying to prove something. It makes sense to know who took the picture. It makes sense to be able to find this person again and to double check if it was his picture or if the picture was completely photoshopped and there were 10 versions, no, there is only two persons, it's not my picture. So this is the kind of things that we do in school. We don't say to people, you should listen to TV number one. TV number one is the truth, TV number two is shit, TV number three are liars. We don't say this. We just tell people that information in our society is such a great power. It's such a powerful power. But at the same time, we're so overflowed with it. Yes, we are. But in the meantime, in the meantime, you have so many possibilities to double check. 20 years ago, you had two sources of information, and then you were stuck. 
then you have these two solutions, then what else can you get? No, nothing else. So you have to believe them. Today, I don't have only two sources of information. So of course I've got the traditional media that I can look at. Of course I've got the TV hurrying every hour, saying just two lines for every, even just not taking every any step back. I understand that. But in the meantime, what I'm saying to kids is, it's your job to do it. They are trying to sell things. They are trying to get an audience, to sell their magazine and them. So, of course, they care about information, but at the end, they care about selling their magazines. So, they are not interested in giving you the full report about what's going on in this country or on this event. So, of course, if you want to understand everything, you might be angry. And you might say, okay, it's harsh. They are only talking to me about this anger, or they are only explaining me this story, I want the whole analysis. So, if you want to have it, find it. There are so many people reporting, there are so many people on blogs and WhatsApp. I'm not saying that blogs are shit, I'm saying blogs sometimes are very excellent, sometimes even better than traditional media. For example, in Syria, we saw a few persons outside the journalist world that are covering what's happening in Syria. And if you want to find the best expert in map of what's happening in Syria, he will have 20 years old and he will come from Germany or from Switzerland. There are so many people that start to work as journalists that explain their methods and they do a great job. And so what I want to say to people is understand how it works, understand that there are such a rules, understand that some guys, as in butcher, the butcher can be a guy, the other one will be a good guy, so journalist is the same. So, bad guys trying to, to, to make money and don't even think about the story, but of course there are great uh, reporters doing great jobs. So you have to get the rules, you have to understand the rules, and you have to defend yourself, because it's your right to be informed, it's your right to know the truth, and you have the capacity, you have the tools, you have the internet, you have the, the education, you know how to read, you know how to write, you know how to talk, so you can call people. In a lot of different countries, people don't have access to this kind of information, don't have access to internet, don't have access to, I want to double check. Uh, I'm a French citizen, you're telling me something about France, I want to double check, I will double check, and I will not have any trouble. And this is what we want to say to people. We want to say to people that if they start to believe everything, if they don't double check, they will be, they will be, I don't know, but it's, imagine a, a whole generation, badly informed, I can do pretty much whatever I want with them. You understand? If they are not checking things, if they are not double checking things, I will tell you, for example, now that your prime minister is gone. Don't check it, then it's all right. But th this is what uh, I, I want to say as an educated people, because they receive a lot of information on Facebook, and most of the time nowadays you see some people share, and then they get comments, and then they answer, yes, I share, but I didn't read uh, or read the, the article. So why do you share the news? You don't read the article. It's insane, it's stupid, and it can be dangerous. So we tell them that it can be dangerous. So, and then, what can we do as a journalist to bring your aspiration? Is it our role to bring a solution to the, to the issue we are uh, witnessing? At the time, 20 years ago, I would have said no. I would have said no, you keep, keep reporting, keep witnessing, keep give to see the people, but don't look for solution. You don't have enough uh, capacity or power to, to make a change. Nowadays, uh, I would say that it's completely different. And this is an example of how we take control of our work. Uh, at the time, 20 years ago, I would have done all the picture for a magazine of an agency, and the agency and the magazine would have kept all the rights on those pictures. They would have given me a fee every month and they would have kept all the rights, so they would have the right to sell the picture of me. Today we keep all the rights for our picture, for our production, and we decide to broadcast them and to sell them and to, 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 to share them on a lot of different platforms. And what it's new today for me is that I, as a photojournalist, or you as a journalist, or you as a radio guy, whatever, you can contact directly the audience. You are not uh, forced to pass by Time magazine. You can have your own audience. And regarding this, I believe that in the coming months, in the coming year, 
if I can have my own agents, if I can communicate with my own audience, then I will be able to make a change and I will be able to ask my audience to make a change. For, for just giving you one example, the last example I have in mind is the work of Robin Hamon. Uh, he's a Belgian guy, I guess. And he's working on long-term projects. He did one long-term project in Africa the last 10 years and he starts his new long-term project now on the LGBT community in the country where it's illegal to be gay or lesbian. Okay, so he is visiting the country where he can be gay and he's trying to document the life of gay people. At the time, he would have done a picture, of, he would have visited a traditional media, that's it, he would have done an exhibition, maybe a book, and he would have gave maybe 15%, penny or 50% of the book uh, money for a uh, different association. And it was the only thing that he could do. Today, he's doing it completely differently. So he's not looking towards traditional media. He is going on social network. He is pasting his picture. He is trying to wake up the community from the country he is visiting, he is documenting things. And then he is trying to shake everyone to say, my picture, my raising your awareness uh, right now, it's an opportunity for you to make a change, to raise your voice, to ask for a conference, to ask for city hall guy to come, to ask for the government to come. And the last news I received from him is that he was pressed to do a Kickstarter for six guys that he documented the life on. He was in Angola, I guess, and in Angola they are not killing the gay, but it's nearly the same. They are doing the in jail without trial, so it's a very difficult situation. And he had took the, the picture of five guys, and the guy later on explained to him that they were in jail. So he came back, he started a Kickstarter, and he asked his audience, the one who was sharing his picture, the one that was commenting his picture for six months, and he said that, okay, we need 20,000 euro, and if you give me 20,000 euro, I will take those 20,000 euro, I will take those five guys out of prison, and I will pay them a lawyer. And that's exactly what he did. And in four days, or maybe a week, he get those 20,000 euro. So I believe that what you said is common. It's not over here, because we don't realize, everyone doesn't realize what is in his power, in his uh, capable of with the audience. But let's say in five years, it, it will be very efficient to make a change this way. It will connect people and it will connect people that have a positive ideas. Thank you.